All right, the number is exactly what we told you at around 11 o'clock, 7.55%, which is higher than the median forecast of 7.1%, a full 40 basis points higher. Mr. D.K. Joshi now joins in to talk about these numbers. Uh, Mr. Joshi, 7.55, is it uh, well above your estimates or were you expecting such a higher number? So we were expecting around 7.1, 7.2%, I think, in that range. So this is, uh, this is higher than uh, what we expected, and I think we need to see what has caused it. So I think maybe some more digging at the data will reveal. Uh, I think my guess is maybe the food, food inflation could have been higher than what we expected. And I think the other uh, angle could be that the, there has been a lot of uh, revision of electricity prices uh, uh, of late at, in many states. And that was yet to be reflected in IIP, oh sorry, in WPI. Maybe I think that has happened. So I think these are just conjectures. The data uh, will, will show, I think, what has caused this sudden lift uh, beyond expectation. Mr. Joshi, just another mention uh, right now where we see that June inflation data has been revised to 7.58 from 7.25%. The revisions also uh, just keep increasing. What do you make of that pre data as well? 7.58 for the month of June from 7.25% earlier. Well, I think it's basically indicating that the first estimates were, were not firm. I mean, and I think there was a correction. And I think there was the sense, I think we were also getting that because uh, if you look at the Monday prices, etc., there was a sharp increase. And I think that was uh, to be reflected at some point in, in, in WPI. Maybe we didn't anticipate it uh, happening this month. But clearly, I think uh, it's, uh, as, as the time goes by, I think the, the revisions are, uh, are get closer to reality. So I think it's just reflecting that. But yeah, I think it's uh, now, since we have had diesel price hike also, so I think what, what it means is that the next month uh, in, or uh, after a month, I think we should see inflation close to 8%. Okay, the, uh, if you're getting some of the detail break up, the index for food articles group declined by 0.4%. Um, this is, of course, all provisional numbers that they're talking about. Due to lower prices of fruits and vegetables, I'm actually reading from the release, lower price of fruits and vegetables, uh, which was 5%, poultry, chicken, 4%, fish, marine. However, the price of some pulses uh, were higher, ragi prices were higher, gram and order. So they're giving a break up. The index for non-food articles uh, rose by 3.8% to about 2068 That's the absolute number of the index that we're talking about. Mr. Joshi, what's the takeaway from this? Um, are we kind of done seeing the, the bottom of inflation for this year? Was the last number as low as it perhaps could get? Even the last number actually has been revised higher. So should we be prepared for a full year FY13 number closer to 8%? I think that is our current forecast that I think we'll have an average of around 8% uh, for this year. And I think if, uh, 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 if, uh, if, if further price, I mean, if the good news, I think on the food, uh, um, I wouldn't call it fully good news, but I think these, uh, the, the encouraging news is that the rains have revived. So we can be pretty sure that the rabi uh, production will be reasonably good, though Kharif has been dented and I think that will show up in, in agriculture estimates. So I think some good news on, on that front that uh, the, the, uh, the expectations will now will get muted a little bit. But overall, I think uh, we do see uh, uh, inflation close to 8% because even with, the, uh, with, with, with this price hike which was done yesterday, the fuel price inflation is still suppressed. And I think you'll have to move closer towards uh, aligning it to global prices. Otherwise, I think the fiscal risk uh, increases. So I think there is, uh, there, there, is, there is still upside to inflation as we go ahead. So I think, but an 8% average seems, uh, 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 seems uh, uh, plausible to us at this juncture. All right, fair enough. 7.55 is the kind of figure that we've got. Let's also get another voice, Aditi Nair, senior economist at ICRA, is now joining in. Aditi, thanks so much for joining us on this leg of the show. Your initial reaction when we talk about the latest inflation data? See, we were expecting a number around 7.2%, so this is substantially different from that. Uh, essentially, one of the concerns that we had as far as uh, July, uh, August was concerned was that at that time there were uh, very substantial concerns related to the monsoon. And uh, the deficiency in the monsoon had come down between uh, uh, 1st of August and the end of August. However, there was still a large uh, expectation that uh, there would be an El Nino impact in September. So essentially, uh, uh, what we were uh, expecting was that food prices would go up fairly substantially because of the monsoon-related concerns in August. 
uh, some of these may uh, sort of uh, concerns have been addressed now that uh, the uh, withdrawal of the monsoon has been delayed in uh, September. So to some extent food prices may uh, uh, see less of uh, a spike uh, uh, in the coming month. Also the other big concern that we had was that uh, crude oil prices had firmed up very substantially uh, over the course of August and that clearly was something that uh, was going to put pressure on uh, the overall uh, headline inflation. Okay, Mr. Joshi, just want to uh, point out the number. I've got the, the release and the manufactured product uh, increase year over year is about 6%. So we are again moving away, far away from the RBI's comfort zone on seeing uh, core inflation cool off. So would that be an added reason why the Reserve Bank will definitely not look at re cutting rates anytime soon? It's, it's kind of strange that the core inflation is going up uh, and the economy, uh, economic growth is down. And I think if you look at the state of the manufacturing sector, there's near stagnancy or rather degrowth. So I think it's it's kind of re difficult to reconcile uh, rising core inflation there because the demand in the system is is is, is definitely fading. Maybe it is the it's the impact of uh, of depreciation uh, on on imported inputs and then uh, of of the rupee on imported inputs and. Then on the uh, on the on the uh, on the wholesale prices of, of of some of the manufactured products, but I think it's I still find it uh, pretty uh, 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 awkward uh, uh, awkward trend. I mean that growth going down or demand going down, and I think core inflation on a rising trend. Actually, let's just look at the breakup now. Why is it that manufactured product inflation is back to six percent, which is never a good sign of an economist will always vouch for that. Sugar has shown a lot of inflation. We are talking 16% uh, compared to just 6% last year and even if you compare it to the last month, it wasn't such a high number. Edible oils has, has shown an increase, about 10.5% here. And on cement and lime, again, there is a big surge, about 13.5%. Some of the components of manufactured products, which are taking that number itself to about 6 odd percent. Aditi, what is your sense? Uh, is this a big concern that core inflation continues to nudge back up? I think definitely we were expecting core inflation to notch up slightly but 6% uh, kind of a number is not what we were looking at. Uh, as Mr. Joshi was saying, it does seem a bit strange that we have, uh, you know, consumption uh, slowing. We've seen that from the GDP data and we've seen that from the latest uh, IIP numbers that uh, consumption demand seems to be uh, cooling off. And uh, pricing pressure uh, we expected would have weakened to some extent. Uh, of course, edible oils is something that uh, was a concern given the fact that oil seeds haven't been doing too well and India is a net importer of uh, edible oils. Uh, so that uh, was expected to happen, but a 6% kind of a number is uh, is definitely a concern. Mm. So Joshi, let me come to you with another uh, fact that we're just looking at right now. For fuel and power, it's up nearly 3%, and fuel has really been one of the single largest contributor in terms of the infl inflation actually cooling off to a certain extent. It's really been contributing there. With what happened la uh, late last evening, what's the outlook now? Well, I think uh, the what uh, the the increase that was affected yesterday was going to push uh, the overall uh, WPI inflation by almost 60 basis points. So that is the first round effect, and we know that unlike petrol, diesel has uh, significant second round effects. So I think, uh, but in a depressed economic scenario, the second round effects are a bit muted. So uh, I think the the quantum of second round effects will not be uh, will not be that large. But clearly, I think in uh, very uh, in the next month's number, you should see the reflection of 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 of, of, of diesel price increase, and also uh, uh, the second round effects will play out to some extent. So overall, I think as I said, I think inflation will uh, will will be around eight percent for the next uh, uh, few months. So uh, where does this leave all the guesswork for uh, policy easing, Aditi? You want to get your sense in on this? Uh, uh, it's, uh, I mean, the developments are quite close to the next policy, but I, I don't think too many people were expecting a rate ease in any case. What would you expect from the Reserve Bank over the next six months? See, we were not expecting any uh, rate uh, cut in September uh, or in October, so uh, we were looking at the earliest rate cut coming in around December. Now, uh, given today's data and uh, the changes in the diesel price hike, of course, it remains to be seen what kind of a second round impact actually is there, given the fact that uh, uh, manufacturing sector is uh, stagnating. Uh, 
to a large extent and that uh, consumer demand uh, seems to be coming off. So if we are looking at a slightly uh, lower uh, impact, uh, second round impact of the diesel price hike at least on manufactured products, uh, that uh, would uh, sort of uh, ease uh, the concern a little bit. However, uh, we are looking at somewhat of an 8% uh, uh, kind of headline number for uh, the uh, next quarter. Uh, essentially, I think that is going to make it a very uh, tough decision as far as the RBI is concerned on looking at whether to cut rates even in the December policy or not. Mm. So, Joshi, let me ask you this now. When we're talking about the options in terms of what the RBI can actually do from here, late last night you had that huge announcement coming in from Fed itself regarding QE3 coming in. Now, put that into the context of what we have domestically. You have weak IIP, your auto sales numbers have been showing a weak growth outlook. All of that has been weakening. The, uh, the recent uh, inflation number that we just tracked in the last couple of minutes has also inched up. Is there a case where we could probably see somewhat of a concerted effort coming in from central banks across the globe where they could actually support QE or that's a far-fetched idea right now looking at our own situation? Well, I think uh, QE, uh, there is, I think in the, in the western part of the world, there is, uh, there is need to create liquidity. I mean, otherwise uh, the downside risks to growth rise. So that is why we are seeing these unconventional measures like uh, uh, QE and also European Central Bank getting into the act of uh, some, some sort of uh, uh, unlimited bond buying program. So I think these are all uh, measures aimed at, uh, uh, aimed at keeping the monetary policy uh, very, very loose. Uh, I think back in India, the, there is spillover of, uh, of, of QE into our economy through, essentially we have seen through commodity prices, etc. So that does create an upside to, to our inflation. But I think overall, uh, 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 our sense is that the central bank, uh, for central bank to take action, I think the domestic factors will play a bigger role. Uh, though uh, the, the yesterday's measure does put pressure on inflation, does raise inflation, but I think it has, it also has some positive effects. I mean, it, it eases the fiscal burden. Uh, it also reduces inflationary expectations because the suppressed component of inflation reduces. So I think that in a way creates uh, uh, conditions for the central bank to, 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 to start softening its uh, stance. Because I think the central bank action look at the, the, uh, I mean the, the inflation going ahead. And I think if, if the fiscal pressure, uh, if we see some more action from the government towards uh, easing of fiscal pressure, then I think that does create uh, uh, conditions for central bank to cut rates. Uh, it may not happen uh, on, on Monday, but I think uh, over the, over the co course of this fiscal, I think I would, we still expect about uh, 50 basis point cut in rates happening. So Mr. Joshi, you're saying that even if the inflation number itself continues to be pretty high and above 8%, the central bank could still look at rate cutting and monetary easing if the government keeps moving on the deficit front. Is that right? Uh, I think so. I think that, that's precisely what I'm saying. I mean, so that creates conditions for the, for the central bank to start acting because if fiscal pressure is easing, see, we all know that the, the major reason behind the sustained pressure on inflation has been the fiscal stance. So if that itself is easing, so that, that creates conditions for, uh, for, uh, 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 for inflation to go down further. And on top of that, you have the overall economy which is sluggish. So if government, which, uh, what it essentially it means is that the private demand is slowing down and government uh, uh, is also not creating demand at a fast pace. So overall, uh, 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 the inflationary expectations for future will, 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 will go down and I think that, that will pave way for central bank too because at some point the growth concerns will overtake uh, inflation concerns. And uh, that probably is going to happen soon. All right. Uh, this is just one quick outlook in terms of the agri space as well because monsoon seem to have improved a little bit in your own sense. How would that actually pan out in terms of a component for inflation for next month? I think we should see a, a much slower rate of uh, increase in the food index uh, in month-on-month uh, -month terms in September as compared to what uh, today's uh, data would have shown. I think the concerns uh, were very substantial in the month of August and they have eased to a large extent uh, in September and uh, that should uh, definitely uh, start showing up in uh, the data from uh, September onwards. All right, Mr. Joshi and uh, Aditi as well, thanks for being with us today, helping us interpret the numbers 7.5%, slightly above market estimates, and definitely a big nudge up from the July number. That's inflation. Market still holding on to gains of nearly 2%. are so now all eyes on that important policy meet coming up next week. I think the expectations are very, very, very low. So if then the Reserve Bank decides to surprise, then who knows. But of course, absolutely almost zero expectations for this policy. Fair enough. On that note, it's a wrap on this edition of Market Pass. Stay tuned. FNO Spotlight coming up in just two minutes from now.